Why do some people seem to have endless creative brilliance while you stay stuck in the same rut you always do every time you go to work on your story? What if I told you that this creative block is not because you're not creative yourself, but it's because you might be sabotaging yourself in ways that you've never even considered? Well, that's the subject of our conversation today. We're going to talk about three things that you might be doing unknowingly that might be making it harder for you to come up with story ideas. So let's start with the first one. You don't engage in enough diverse media. So we all like what we like. Some of us like manga. Some of us like web comics, video games, movies, etc. And it's kind of hard to expect someone to suddenly change what their interests are. But when you're a writer and when you're a storyteller and when you're tasked with creating brand new world, the more different kinds of media that you consume, the bigger that pot of experience you'll be able to draw from will be. If you just read manga, for example, and you're creating your own manga, you're going to start noticing a lot of different tropes that exist solely within manga. Character tropes, narrative arc tropes, and various things like that. They're going to become very obvious to you the more you read it. Then if you go to create your own manga, you're going to kind of retreat to those things that you're used to. You're going to retreat to the things that you recall reading from all of those manga that you've read. And while inherently this isn't a bad idea, this is one of the number one ways that you will run into roadblocks when trying to come up with story ideas. Because that pot of experience, that bowl of experience is going to be so small, it's only going to capture manga. Whereas if you're someone who enjoys manga, but maybe you like watching Hollywood movies as well. There are different ways that things are portrayed in Hollywood movies to manga. There are different types of character arcs and narrative arcs, even down to things like composition and how scenes are shot can give you a fresh outlook on how to do those things in your own work. This will give you a lot more. That pool will be much bigger when you're drawing on ideas. It is kind of an internal thing that you have to work on yanking yourself out of and trying to practice getting into different forms of media and really studying, well, hmm, in movies, what's what are the beats like? What are the character arcs like? How do they compose the story with the characters and how do they demonstrate that? It's going to give you a much more vivacious, <laughs> if that word is correct, it's going to give you a much brighter palette for you to use when you're working on your own story. Not only that, but for fans of whatever the medium is that you're creating your story for, they may even notice, oh, this is a fresh take on the chosen one trope that I don't typically read. And that's because you're able to pull from various different mediums and integrate that trope into the one that you're making. The whole goal here is to get that pool, that story idea pool to be much, much, much bigger. And one of the most critical ways to do that is to consume various different kinds of media than just the one that you're writing in. Number two. This one is a little controversial and it might ruffle your feathers a little bit. One of the things that's killing your ability to come up with story ideas is that you are trying to replicate your favorite work. We are all guilty of this. We are literally all guilty of loving a series and trying to basically rewrite the series with our own characters or doing things that are similar to what's in that series. For example, well, I'm a mangaka, so I'm going to use manga as an example within my niche. Jujutsu Kaisen is a very popular work, and I pick on it quite a lot on my channel. It kind of spurred this renaissance of exorcist manga, what's called exorcist manga, or manga that features yokai, ghosts, demons, and special powers around there. A lot of indie manga authors kind of lean into the popularity of this genre of yokai and exorcist manga and basically do somewhat of a retelling of Jujutsu Kaisen or just a spin on the basic premise of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now for practice, this is totally fine and I think it's great to use an already established world to work on your own story. This is the whole point of fan fiction and I even practiced writing with fan fiction initially. But when it comes to drawing your own ideas, if all you do is try to recreate your favorite work, guess what? The only thing you'll be able to put out on the paper is stuff from your favorite work. Or you'll try to repackage aspects of your favorite work and try to pass it off as your own. I've also seen this 
occasionally where some people will basically take the entire beats and characters and tropes of a chapter from their favorite work and just repackage it with their own character. For practice, fine, keep doing that. But when you're trying to come up with a brilliantly new story, it's a crutch that you will have a hard time breaking yourself out of. You have to learn how to absorb from your favorite works the things that you like the most and pluck them into your own work. For a personal example, I love Slam Dunk. This is my little wall of Slam Dunk stuff. Obviously, my work Yield Treehouse is nothing like Slam Dunk. It's not a sports manga. There is a fantasy, huge fantasy element there that doesn't exist with Slam Dunk. So obviously, I'm not going to try and just recreate Slam Dunk in a fantasy world. I took something that I really liked about Slam Dunk, which is the character arcs. I think Slam Dunk is one manga that has the most potent and rich character arcs of any manga that I've ever read. And it taught me how important characterization is. So rather than trying to repackage a weird fantasy version of Slam Dunk, I said, you know, I'm going to learn how Inoue does the character arcs in Slam Dunk, and I'm going to try to implement that into how I do character arcs. This will give you that muscle memory of coming up with the ideas on your own, but you still get to use a little bit of what you like about your favorite works. So the key here is you can draw from inspiration from the works that you really like, but one thing that is prohibiting you from writing your own story ideas is the excessive copying of the works that you like rather than coming up with new things on your own. And the last truth and arguably the most important, the reason why you struggle to come up with story ideas is simply because you do not trust yourself. Now I'm going to get a little woo woo -y here, <laughs> uh, but I firmly believe that when we're creating the ideas that we have that come to us, are true. And I mean that they are genuine. They are good ideas because we came up with them. What we have the tendency to do as creatives is to consume our own work before we even have a chance to put it on the paper. You might create a character or a premise for a story, and before you even commit to any idea, you may say, ah, oh, this is terrible, this character is stupid, this idea is dumb. That's you consuming the work before you give your audience a chance to consume it. It's my belief that as creatives, our job is purely to give the audience something to consume. Give them a story, give them characters, give them something to attach to. It's not our job to consume our own work. It's not our job to tell ourselves how terrible what we create is and not even let that idea have a moment to leave from our brains. You got to trust yourself when you're coming up with story ideas. You have to trust that what you're coming up with is decent, is good. A lot of times, some of your best pieces, some of your best work is going to be stuff that you thought really sucked. I've already had the experience of some people telling me certain panels in chapter one of my series were really well drawn and they loved it. And those were panels that I thought were terrible. This is the problem with consuming your own work. You're putting this block in your head between your story ideas and your ability to get them out to your perfect audience. This is something that I feel like takes a lot of time to work through because people who are more creative, who write stories, who create characters have the tendency to be a lot more sensitive with regard to the ideas that we have. But you have to practice and get into the habit of just letting what you come up with just exist. Let it be. Now, one key point to say with this is you should have someone close to you, someone that you trust someone that you know has your best interest in mind to kind of review what you come up with and keep you honest. We don't want to work in a little dungeon. You know, you want someone who really cares and wants you to succeed to analyze what you're doing and course correct, help you course correct if something is a little funny. But with that being said, you have to learn how to trust your ideas. A lot of times it's not that you don't have any ideas. It's simply that you don't trust what you come up with. The more you work on writing stories and creating characters and putting the two together, the more you'll begin to trust your intuition with writing. And the more you'll begin to trust what you come up with is a reflection of your style as a storyteller. This is my thought, you know, if you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. But I do think that trust is key and one of the most important things for creating stories. So the next time you find yourself being stuck on writing and creating your story ideas and making characters, I hope you'll think about these three things that we talked about because they just might be the thing that's blocking you from writing. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in reading chapter one of my manga, it is called Yield Treehouse and it is available 
available on Global Comics, Webtoon, and Manga Plus creators, though I highly suggest you read it on Global Comics, which in my view is the best comics platform out. If you'd like to support the channel and you'd like to support my work, I do have a Patreon as well where I post behind the scenes stuff for Yield Treehouse. It is free to join. Feel free to look at all the behind the scenes crappy little drawings that I make and enjoy them for yourself. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.